Cool man in here on town say it goes back a long, long way To medieval times and even Roman days they say But whereabouts did this all start? Well, here's a story true That gives some indication if you're looking for a clue Well, when he first started, when he was uh, 13, 14, he, um, he actually looked after the pit ponies because he was quite a, a young one, so they, they started him off doing that. And then he was in the shed sorting out the coal and the coke, sorting out the stones, because there was often stones in them, and that was, that was his job at first. And then he moved on to, to start working with the engines, um, which was, he eventually became an engine driver. My father was uh, like a charge man on the, on the screens, and uh, I left school on the Friday, and me, me father says, you've got to go and do and see the manager. He wants a word with you. So I went down and seen the manager. He says, you start as a blacksmith on Monday. So I left school on the Friday, started in the blacksmith shop on the, on the Monday. My brother Billy, William, uh, he was 14 when he left school. He went straight down the pits. And uh, he looked like a little Ben with his, when he used to come in, black as roads, have a bath, come in. My mother might have just made a clippy mat, she'd put it on the floor, and he would put the towel around him after his bath. But he still had black rings around his eyes. It didn't seem as if they could get them off. It would lie on his stomach, and me and my sister used to sit on his back and pick the, the blackheads, the coal out of his back. Um, every link of his spine was bruised, as Billy will now because he's been in 18-inch seams before on the sides, hue and coal. Uh, it was a hard job, but he loved it. Uh. My father was an engine driver, and he drove the coal down. He didn't drive passenger trains, but he drove the coal down to the Tyne to be taken down to London. He used to run down to the mainline railway at Bladen, and Bladen stayed, they tipped the coal into boats, I suppose, at that time. It had to be a continuous uh, journey down there as the coal was coming out of the mine quite uh, on a regular basis. So it was a very important job to keep the thing rolling. This used to be the entrance to the Mary Drift, uh, part of the Bladen Burn 2 2 Drift, it was here, Mary and Bessie. But this was the main entrance to the Mary Drift here. I was a pony driver here, and uh, that was driving the, the tubs from the uh, where the putters brought them to, there was no pony putting here, it was all hand putting. I would hook up two or three tubs, take them onto the next landing, it was then went down at a lift, they would go down, lift the other one up, with empty, where the empty tubs used to come up, and back onto the, and the same thing next time, full ones would go in there, empty ones come up the other side. Well, I was just on straighten, you know, and you pick the thing up, you had a, a straighten hammer, and the uh, blacksmith held things on the armour and the heavy things, you had to hit them with the, with the striking hammer, you know? And that's how you learned your first stages, you know? And you were on, like, blacksmith striker. And then you went on the forge hammers, which you had a pedal hammer, which, and then you had a, a hammer, forge hammer like that, for heavier stuff. I remember um, my brother telling me that he went down with them once when he was very young about seven no health and safety in those days and uh, he went into the sheds with him and he was terrified because of the noise the noise was terrific and uh, but they were so impressed with him the way he behaved that they gave him his own little pay packet <laughs> oh i was fascinated by the trains because obviously i was the only daughter in the family and my brother, my youngest brother and I used to have quarrels about who would take Dad's dinner on a Sunday because he very often worked on a Sunday because a lot of people didn't like to work at the weekends. And my father was fitting in with anything that was available. And he, we had a, 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 a proper tin pot that would go on top of the boiler. And uh, we used to fight over that job. I'm going to take Dad's dinner. I'm, no, no, it's my turn this week. And we would get on the train, you see, and hand it to Dad. And can we blow the whistle, Dad? 
and he would say, yes, go on, blow the whistle. <laughs> so that was, it was the highlight of the job because it was such a powerful engine. It was very exciting for children and wonderful to travel with the train too. The flight was a place with an aerial rope and aerial uh, little tubs attached to the rope that were taken from the Mary Drift up to where the bottom of Baller Lane and the end of the uh, Bladen Burn Road uh, was put in the hoppers there, wagons would go in there and fill up and most of it, the coal, uh, was done uh, was for the uh, concessionary uh, coal that the miners got and the wagons used to deliver it to the houses. I remember he used to get his tonne of coal once a month, that was his allowance. He used to get his tonne of coal and it used, they used to bring it in the, in the flat back lorry and tip it out just on the pavement outside the, the gate. And then it was our job, me and my two brothers, we used to go get the metal pails and the shovels and out would go and shovel it in and then we had to carry it up and throw it in the coal house. And I remember one day my brother, my younger brother, had a paddy on him and he decided, you know, he didn't want to do it. So my mother said, you're doing it, you're doing it. <laughs> so he started and he was really in a paddy and he had the long handled shovel. And when we were putting it in the coal house, he chucked the shovel into the coal house with such force that it bounced back and it split his lip wide open, the blade of the shovel. You've never seen anything like, well, he still bears the scar today. Well, on a pay day, if he was at work, my mother had sent me down to Blade and Burn to the pit office to pick his wages up. So he said, we had to pick the wages up and bring him up with my mother. Because you had to hand your money over in them days, you couldn't say, brother, I'll give you this. You just give her the wage and she could give you what she thought. I got five shillings, pocket money, my first wage, which was wonderful. You had to buy lipstick, you had to go out the dance with it, and you had to go out the picture house with it. But it, you managed with the coppers. Well, I was you make coupling chains that went under the tubes for to pull them and you made centre boards that went through the, the, the tube for the coupling chains to go on. We were on the land and where the, the tubes come out of the pit with the ponies and the pony was coupled into here and they pulled the pony, pulled the tubes out of the, to the landing and then they had the coupling chain here which we used to make, we used to couple two or three tubes together, you know? So the pony would be pulling maybe about three tubes of coal at a time. It was hard work for them, and they didn't get out into the fresh air. They, see, they, they were well looked after. They were well fed, well groomed, and they always had, you know, they, they, they were always warm and they got the best of attention really. If they got injured, which did happen sometimes, um, they would be brought, they were brought out to the mine and, and, and treated properly at the, at the stables outside. This was a bit more difficult in a deep mine where they had to go up out of the, of the shaft by the, the cage, it's more difficult. If it was a drift mine, it was a matter of walking them out. Right, so the handles on the tub down here put there for a reason. You would never put your fingers over the top of the top tub like that. You were that near the roof and if the tub came off the way with your hands on here you're pushing it or pulling it or whatever you would jam your fingers because it would lose your fingers because there's only the, the height of the roof was here. Oh there's quite a few accidents yeah more sure with the with the hands you know because you had tools like that and you had a hot bars and that in it and you were forge hammer you know you had to forge it in the shape you know we liked all the lads they had good times didn't they really yes, doing the pits and all your mates and you drank with them on a the weekend if they didn't go to work on a monday it's what you call pitman's monday because they were drunk on the sunday night so they couldn't get to work on the monday and my doctor 
uh, Morrison used to come into surgery in the mornings here. Anybody here for sick knows you can go home. You're not getting them. Because he knew they were drunk the night before. The ships then off to sea they went to London and beyond. Then huge increase in cruel demand caused mining to respond. And so the northern cruel fate grew in pits were far and wide. When Leyden's coal had paved the way, good grounds for local pride. The coal will heal the coal for Lord.